Hello there Retroheads, Benny Williams back again for a Hermit's Hideaway. As you can see in front of me I've had another delivery, a parcel. This comes from my very good friend Kieran Bowes who is the man behind Retro Tech 100, the YouTube channel and also the Facebook group. He also started the Transatlantic Retro Podcast which I'm a co-host on. He started that with Jane Sanambria who is from the Gamers Vault on YouTube as well. So we're going to open up this package and we'll have a little chat about it as we're doing it. And I do love a package and it's supposed to be some games and I know some of the games that I'm supposed to be getting. But I'm starting to wonder if he's just taking the piss and he's just sent me two breeze blocks or something because it's bloody, it's far heavier than what I was expecting or anticipating. Because it was only supposed to be about a dozen games or something like that, I think. But let's see. It may just be very well packed, which is why it's a bit heavier than what I, why I thought it would be. So I'm just going to take this one out and we'll just have a little chat about what's going on with this box. So basically Kieran has sent me some Commodore 64 games. He knows I am a huge, huge Commodore 64 fan and he sort of, he grew up the Spectrum so he does like the Commodore 64 but he's got more of a nostalgia for the Spectrum than he did over the Commodore 64 whereas I grew up and had the Commodore as a child where obviously Kieran would have had the Spectrum. He knows it's a very dear console computer that I hold dear to my heart and it's taken me far too long to get back into it again as an adult and I've been enjoying playing and collecting for it and he very kindly sent me a load of cassettes. Now I was expecting obviously this power pack pack and he showed me a photo of a handful of them but I can see already that there's more than just a handful of what I was expecting in there so we're gonna go through and see what we've got so three complete games for from Commodore Format the magazine which I never owned because I was too young at the time when I had the Commodore 64 so I wasn't really reading magazines I was just playing the games so unfortunately I never had that uh, this is number 31 and I could tell you already just having some of these I'm delighted to have them because I just want to go crazy on um, my cassette collecting for the classic computers classic home computers I want to get into spectrum collecting I've got some Anstrad CPC games already I've got quite a few Commodore 64 games and some great homebrew as well so I'm just going to shift this box out of the way and we'll have a look through what else we've got so on this one quickly there's Cauldron 2, Subterranea, Monster Mash and there's two demos Snare and Arnie 2 now I remember Cauldron 2, uh, well I remember there was Cauldron 1 which definitely did get a release so I'm not sure about these other ones but that is great anyway um, this one got some Llama Soft games by the look of it uh, this is cassette number 19 from Commodore Format try and get that out of the light for you so you can see so we've got Sheep in Space and Attack of the Mutant Camels Attack of the Mutant Camels I believe by Jeff Minter of Llama Soft so I'd imagine Sheep in Space probably was as well and also there's a utility on there called the UDG System 2 and Aquablast Aquablaster sorry which might be a game I'm not too sure oh yeah Aquablaster it does say on the back there it's a full game and I was hoping to show yeah I can see here Sheep in Space and Attack of the Mutant Camels, both by Llamasoft, I had a feeling there would be from good old Jeff Minter. I've met him a couple of times at the Retro Games Expos. So I was hoping 
a bit like David Birdsall does, to show you some of the screenshots on the games, but unfortunately they don't tend to have them by the look of it on these power pack ones from Commodore format, but never mind. David Birdsall, by the way, has got a fantastic channel. He mostly focuses on buying ZX Spectrum games. He's got a great collection. He normally does uh, gameplays from ZX Spectrum games. He takes requests as well. It's a great channel. It's becoming one of my favourite channels very quickly. He's starting to do some pickups now. He collects from multiple systems and collects multiple games. I tried to adjust the angle a little bit so you could try and see a little bit better, but fortunately the camera stand and the ring light stand is taller than the table itself. It's quite a short table because I accidentally broke the glass, the nice glass one that we had. Anyway, moving on. I had picked up this and then had to put it back down because there was a knock at the door from my daughter. So that's another reason I had to pause and come back. But Kieran's also sent me this game I've never heard of or played before called Rattler. So, like I say, I was only expecting the Commodore 4 Mac cassettes, so I'm quite surprised, but at the same time delighted that there's obviously more than just the Commodore 4 Mac games in here, so you're a legend, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate that. Let's have a quick look inside, see if there is a screenshot at all. No, just the instructions by the look of it. So we've got a, another Commodore format power pack. This is number 42. And on here we've got Deliverance Stormlord. Sorry, Deliverance Parts 1 and 2 Stormlord. And Deliverance Part 3. Hopefully nothing to do with the films. And then there's three reader games on there, which is Fire Eagle, Chrome Bros and Alien Smash, which I haven't heard of any of those, and I bet they're probably just freeware sort of things, so it's going to be very interesting checking these out. Next up, we've got Commodore Format Tape number 17. On here we have Battle Valley, Cyberdeen Warrior, a demo of Indie Heat, and I imagine the game Sensitive. Yeah, it's a full game Sensitive, it says on the back there. Uh, another fantastic cover of format one. We've got Take 29 of Commodore Format, and we've got Hero Robotics Battleships. I've always enjoyed the Battleships games on the Commodore 64. There's various different ones that were made. I suppose it's one of the easiest games to make for the Commodore, which is why there were so many of them. There's some very basic and there's some quite in-depth ones with impressive graphics on. There's also a demo of Highway Encounter and a game called Carnage as well. Sorry, the full game's Highway Encounter, a bit misleading on the cover there. And the demo's a game called Carnage. Commodore Format Cassette 12, which has Spin Dizzy on, SF Show Special PD Demo, plus there's four demos of, there's one of Rodland, 3D Construction Kit, PP Hammer and Speedball 2. Cassette 21 of Commodore Format, we've got Southern Bell, and Sipital, and three demos, one of the Adams Family, Arnie, and Euro Football Champ. I just recently managed to fix my data set because it was playing up a little bit, so it's going to be great for trying out these games now. I can do it, I don't have to rely on my SD to IEC hardware, my sort of interface if you like which is great but if we use the cassettes and load like you did originally it's even better so here is tape 25 and on that 
it says it's a complete graphics package which might be pretty cool because I've always wanted to learn to do painting and things like that on the Commodore 64 so we'll see what happens I don't know if you need a mouse or something to be able to use it or have to see that's very interesting indeed anyway next up we've got mini office which is a uh, next up we've got mini office which is a word processor which obviously it was also targeted at families for to try and help children with the homework and stuff like that so it's educational as well as being able to play games on the Commodore so they made a lot of educational software and office based software so not much to say about that it's just got database graphics word processor and spreadsheet on so it's just a whole office package on it Take 14 of Commodore format we've got Aliens, Terror of the Deep both complete games and it says two demos of Tilt and Turtles the Coin Op that's the arcade Take 27 on here it says one complete package of Loadmaster, one complete game, The Muncher, with some sort of King Kong ripoff on the front there. Oh, brilliant! So I didn't have, and I was looking for when I was having issues with my data set. I was looking for a tape head alignment software and thankfully this has got one built into it, which is fantastic so it says full utility loadmaster tape head alignment program luckily I managed to do it by luckily I managed to do mine manually in the end and it took a couple of hours to do but I think it was almost spot on but this will be handy to get it near perfect anyway it's just a great set of cassettes so far. Take 26. And we've got Bomber, Twin Tiger, Cosmic Causeway, and two fruit and two three demos saying Doc Croc and Stuntman Seymour, which is probably some sort of evil can evil sort of ripoff, but who cares? Should be fun anyway. <laughs> so for the Amstrad, because Kieran knows I've got the Amstrad CPC, so that's probably what these extra games are. I've got the original Dizzy game. So I have to see if I could get this signed by the Oliver Twins, who are awesome, awesome guys. Very, very nice to me always happy to sign stuff always happy to talk about dizzy as well i know that david birdsall is not a fan of the dizzy games this first one to me very much reminds me of the manic minor sort of era it is hard as nails and you sort of get one hit you die but i do love a dizzy game my favorite one being treasure island dizzy So take 22, two complete games and we've got Agent Orange, Hover Bother, is that? Yep. Yeah. Two demos, DJ Puff and Robocod. Tape 18, and we have three complete games on this Sphinx Jinx, Fast, Fire Lord, and a demo of Demon Blue. Take 
So this one comes with no insert, but it says Orkatech on it, and it says Sparklers on it, so it's probably someone's nickname of who owned it, of whose it was. So I've had chances where I could buy these cassettes without the inserts before and I've always passed them up but I guess I can always print off my own insert at least, make my own insert for it to go over it. It doesn't have to be original perfect for me to go in the collection, I don't care. I do one day hope to fill up a chest of drawers full of cassette games. So take 27 of Commodore format, we've got Deflector, Alternative World Games, Spectre of Bad Dad is the demo on that. Just had to take the tape out for a second because it's got a bit crushed in this, but this was Cassette 25 and this was Saracen Paint again. So there's two copies of that in there. Got another copy of Cassette 19 with the Limesoft games on of Commodore format. So there's a couple of spares here, which I may be able to trade. And it just seems to be going on and on, there's even more games still yet. So this one I just picked out happens to be my third copy of Tape 19 with the Llamasoft on. Not that I'm complaining, I'm not, don't get me wrong. So next one we've got a Zap 64 Mega Tape 25, and it says it's got Gribbly's Day Out on it, Battle Axe and Nifil, Nifil is it I think, and Epic Adventure apparently. I think this is one I remember having as a child, 3D snooker. I do love a casual sports game, especially when it comes to pool and snooker and stuff like that, so I'm hoping this is quite a realistic sort of snooker simulator. And it does look like it's got some screenshots on the back. It does look pretty good actually. Again, I don't know if I'll be better off with a mouse for that or something. I'll have to try and find out. Cassette 16, a Commodore format. And we're going really out of focus now. The Graphic Adventure Creator. Which I was never, I couldn't really get into these because I didn't really understand them. The basics and the commands you've got to put in. So I think they're just like the text type adventure games. Uh, I was going to say I'll probably never use it, but it probably would be quite amusing to do a rude sort of graphic text adventure game for someone. So who knows? Tape 16. I hope we're in focus. I know there's that damn shining light again, which I'm trying to keep out of the way. So we've got Head the Ball and Mission Impossible as the complete games on this, and two demos being First Samurai and Creatures 2. Take 28. You can get that in the right frame. Complete games of First Strike and Fifth Gear and there's four demos on this. Got Nick Faldo's Championship Golf, Reckless Rufus, Christmas Demo and Locomotion. Definitely interesting trying out the Nick Faldo's Championship Golf because again I do, I'm a bit of a sucker for those casual sports games.
Cassette 24, which says it's got one complete game on there and it's got Famous 5 and Puzzle Ball and some demos, which is uh, Match of the Day and Cool Croc Twins. Or perhaps instead of going uh, it's uh, perhaps. Maybe that sounds a bit better. So the full game was Famous 5 on there apparently. Cassette 20. On here we've got Ant Attack, which is a great game. I've showed before that I've got it. Uh, it was done by Quicksilver, I think it was, uh, on the Spectrum. And I've played it before on the Commodore 64, not the Spectrum just yet. I don't, no, sorry, I have played it on the Spectrum on Retro Pi. Maze Mania, and two demos Bob the Alien and Catalypse. And I've never seen one of these before, this is quite interesting. This is the Commodore 64 introductory audio cassette tape. Which I recently got a twin cassette deck, which I might be able to have a listen to on that now. So hopefully I'll be able to make my own sort of repro games and stuff like that for the expensive rare games that I'll never own and have in my collection. Moving on we've got Tape 30 and it says it's got four complete games on there. Music Maker 64 which will be great because I've got the keyboard overlay interface with the Commodore 64. We've got Slayer, probably not the band but just the game. Probably nothing to do with the band but it's a great band anyway. Daedalus, Blackjack and Rebounder. Tape 13. We've got the complete games of Hacker 2 and Sunburst. The demos include to the demos include Turbocharge and Rolling Ronnie. Let's cover up Dizzy there for David so he doesn't start getting sweaty palms or anything seeing it. Cassette number 25, John Lowe's Ultimate Darts. So that's the one complete game on this. And the demos have got Slicks and Hagar the Horrible. I remember the cartoon of Hagar the Horrible. With Helga, I think it was, in there. So we've got another copy of cassette 29, which is just over here, so I'll pop it behind there. Another copy of cassette 26, which again, I'm not complaining because I might be able to use these as tray bait to hopefully get some of the missing ones. Perhaps, or sell off as a cheap small little bundle if I can't get those. We have a, another copy of cassette 27, which was just over here. That's quite weird because this one also says it's cassette 27. Yeah, it's a different one, and this is the one with the Loadmaster head alignment software on there, so this might be handy. Someone might want to purchase it to be able to realign their data set tape heads. So there's a spare of that. So going from having none at all to having two. So cassette 34 we've got here. Four full games on there it says, which is Iraq, Koya, the final chapter, Invasion and Shellshock. Shock. 
We've got another copy of cassette 22. Which is hiding around here somewhere. I'll just leave it there for now. This game is called Army Moves. So it's another Commodore 64 game for me to add to my increasing collection so cheers buddy absolutely love collecting original Commodore 64 cassettes and they're so cheap to get which is even better haha <laughs> brilliant I've also got a copy of Ghost of Goblins which I never had which is a really really tough game but a great game at that very frustrating and Finally, set 23, we've got Defenders of the Earth, Johnny Reb 2, Biff, Bug Bummer, and Nobby the Aardvark. So again, as I said, these games come from Kieran, who is RetroTech 100 on YouTube. Go and give him a like and subscribe because he's got a great, great channel. He does pickups, gameplays, and tech reviews of things like that. So it's really something for everyone. And go and give my mate David Birtle a check out as well because he's just going from strength to the strength and he's doing really well on his at the moment. And he constantly, there's a constant flow of videos and material from him. So it's just, it's fantastic. So, Kieran Matey, thanks once again. I'm delighted to have all these. This is almost on their own a drawer full of games, so it's just brilliant. Cheers, buddy, and thank you all for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers, guys.